gamers, well, look what I've got for you. The Tlex you like. I've been told that this is pretty horrible, but uh, what it is, is an Android game player, much like the GPD XD, but in a PSP format. Oh yeah, it looks great. Holy crud, that hand is way too small. Anyway, let's not even start. Let's, let's just hold on, take a deep breath, and look at the front of the box. Tlex, you like. Do you like it? No, I do not. Android Game Player, Android 4.1. 1.1, 1 1.2 gigahertz extreme speed core. We'll see how that goes. All directions, 3.5 inch flexible touchscreen, support 13 kinds of simulator games and millions of Android application. I'm really hoping that I can just get the app store on here by Google and go for Google apps. That would be really good. Google, Belugal, yeah. Big game system, tiny little hands. Hey there, it's a bunch of meaningless icons. The right side of the box. Console, one piece. USB cable, one piece. AC adapter, one piece. Earphone, oh no. It's gonna have earphones. One piece. User manual, one piece. Warranty card, one piece. And disc, one piece. This is the black one. I ordered the white one, but they ran out of those. So I got black. Good job, guys. The left side of the box. Oh look, it's got Skype. Lily's calling. Will you answer? The top of the box. What is going on here? Super wireless control, not just for fun. It's for sadness too. The bottom of the box. There's a fight going on here. Wi-Fi dual console for battle. The back of the box is butt ugly. Wow, that's really plain. Hmm. Let's blow the top off of this thing. Booyah. All right. I'll take the device itself out. I'm guessing there's gonna be some stuff under here. Sorry if I bashed into the camera. Oh, there really is a CD in here. I'll be darned, there's a little mini CD with a bunch of drivers and crap I bet on it. Maybe a recovery disc. That would be really cool. If there was a recovery disc, that would be a plus. Here is the Telex, or Telex, I don't know, Telex, you like, manual. And it, holy crap, you know what? It actually appears to be halfway decent. It's in full color. And there's some English in here that is okay. It lists the type of uh, games it supports. Looks like there's PSP in here. That's good, I always like that. Look at that, it's got a, yeah, 2.4 gigahertz module function. How cool is that? All right, that's not bad. It has a warranty card, yeah, that's legit. One screen protector, ooh, a little worried about the screen size there. All right, and here we have one USB cable to mini USB, not micro USB, I'm afraid. And the cable itself is pretty well built, does not feel cheap, it's got decent rubber on it, and the necks are reinforced. So that is an okay cable, at least by appearance. We also have a little extension here. Ooh, here, nope. There we go. Have a little extension here. And I don't know what the use of that is considering the other thing's basically the same thing, but longer. Oh well. Let's look at the device itself. Here is an ASMR moment. Let me tell you about the crinkliness of this covering. All right, ASMR over. Holy crud, is this glossy. All right, so D-pad. It is, it's too far apart. You see how far apart the different parts of the split D-pad are? You know, it doesn't feel particularly bad, but I am very concerned about it. Um, 
As far as the buttons are A, B, C, D, they don't feel particularly cheap. They're not great. They're a little bit on the smallish side. Uh, there are two analog sticks here and they're not terribly bad. Uh, I don't feel any of the problem where they're catching uh, like so many of these have. Um, no, nah, not terrible. Home, select, start. That feels really cheap there. Let's look on the top. We've got uh, what appears to be volume, down, up, power, and uh, maybe a reset button. There are two shoulder buttons. I have a feeling the right shoulder button doesn't work because I don't feel positive click. So it might actually be defective. We'll have to check that. It has the XO pattern uh, of the <laughs> of the Vita yet I don't know Ooh, I'm a little worried about this one now space for an SD card there is a uh, HDMI out you got an audio out maybe just a regular AV out no it's a, it's a headphone out and there of course is the charging slash uh, controller port there appears to be a rear mounted camera why they do that is beyond me because they're generally awful when they do that you know uh, you could save your guy yourselves a lot of money you guys could save yourselves a lot of money if you uh, just quit putting the cameras in nobody likes them anyway and nobody uses them all right I'm gonna go power this thing up for a couple days test it out and let you know what I think oh hey that started working oh nope yeah yep it did huh all right, see ya in a little bit. Retro Rob plays everything. All right, I am back after a couple days. I think the first thing you're gonna notice is there's fingerprints all over the place. This is a fingerprint magnet. Second thing you might notice, which you might have noticed before, is that the bezel is huge because the screen's tiny. It needs a bigger screen. That said, what is there is very nice. It looks really clear, no dead pixels. It, it's a decent screen, it's just too small. As far as sound goes, yeah, it's got a tinny speaker, but it is fairly loud. So it's got that going. It's not like super loud like some of the handhelds I've got, but it's not bad. It can hold its own. Um, another issue, construction quality. This is super light. Even my wife, uh, when I handed it to her, said, wow, that's really light. And that is not necessarily a good thing, especially when construction quality is kind of shoddy like it is on this. Uh, this right shoulder button wasn't working. I had to take the unit apart, <laughs> and snap it in properly, and put it back together again to get it working. Oh, uh, what else? Not much. Let's go play some games on this thing. I'm gonna go plug it into a screen. All right, folks. Let's take a look at what the two main problems are with the Tlex you like. No, it's not the controls. They're not that horrible. I've definitely dealt with worse. Uh, the real problems here are lack of system storage and using an amazingly antiquated uh, version of Android. So here we go. We have two gigabytes. Yeah, that's two gigabytes. See? of total space available. What's left after the default apps? Uh, it started out by default around 700 megs. Now, generally you could pop in an SD card and then use that as system memory. In other words, you can use it like it's local memory. However, because this is Android 411, that capability doesn't exist. I can't add that to the existing system memory. I can move apps there but I can't add it to the existing system pool. So, uh, what the side effect of that is, if I were to use Google Play, which by the way does not work on this anyway, uh, it does install and run, however it fails to download and install apps, great. Uh, or if I was using something like Aptoid, uh, those things download to system memory and they use 
system memory is the indicator on whether they have enough room. So I am limited to whatever is available for my downloads. So if I was to try to download a program that was one gigabyte, it's not going to allow me to do it, even though I could move it to auxiliary storage. It won't download directly to it. That, that is a big freaking problem. Um, now, you can work around that. You can go to like you know these different APK uh, websites. You can download the the app directly and install it directly from the file. That's fine, but those places are shady. And part of the convenience of having one of these handhelds is being able to use things like the App Store to directly download them and install them easily. That's the Android advantage for this stuff. And by not allowing that, by just some arbitrary decisions on their part, and really, to be honest, cheap decisions, they've greatly limited the usability of this device. Here we are on the app menu. We've got High Market, which so far as I can tell does not work. At least it never has for me. I get a 404 error every time I run it. So it is pretty much useless thus far. Maybe someday it'll work. Maybe it's just a temporary outage, but it's been like two days. So, you know, it's also in Chinese, which doesn't help it a lot for me. APK installer, Aptoid, I installed. Aptoid does work just fine. It complains a little bit that the Google Play services are out of date, uh, but it will download programs and it will allow me to install them. Browser, it's a basic browser. Nothing to say. There's a clock, a calculator, a calendar, and this camera right here, which, as you can see, look at that. That is a beauty. There's my uh, there's my desktop computer. Uh, there's my little uh, skull thing for my headset. And yeah, it, it's a pretty bad camera. So it's pretty much useless for that function. Let's go over. Uh, Crossy Road doesn't work. It just goes to the Crossy Road and doesn't do jack. Fruit Ninja does work. That was pre-installed. This was not. Uh, there is a download shortcut. You see this. If you've dealt with Android, you've seen all this stuff before. Uh, we've got email. We've got Gmail. Uh, it does collect my email. I'm not going to show you that, but it does do that properly. Game Center, I'm going to show you in just a second. Explorer, uh, this is where I can go if I want to run games externally. Okay, so here we are on the Explorer. I'm going to hit SD card real quick so we can look at what is on my SD card. Can go to a Nest ROM here and I can load it up. Now, the first time you do this, it is going to give you the option to always run uh, using whatever emulator. So what it'll do is it'll uh, give you a list of applications and you'll choose the proper application, you know, like the Nest emulator for Nest files, and it'll ask uh, whether you want it to always run using that. Do not select always run because that doesn't work right. It will assign everything <laughs> to run with that. So in other words, if I, uh, if I set a Nest ROM to run with a Nest emulator, it will then set all ROMs, including the Super uh, Nintendo and everything else to run with the Nest emulator. So just you know, choose your emulator every time. Wow, that's that's a good game to pick. Sorry about that. All right, here we have Game Center, which is a centralized location for all of the built-in games. We've got PSP games, PS1 games, N64 games, SNES, uh, Sega Mega Drive, Game Boy Advanced, arcade games, NES, and Game Boy Color. I'm going to tell you that... Uh, It'll run PSP games, but not super reliably. There's a lot of frame skipping. There's a lot of glitching. Uh, same for PS1 and same for N64. It's not the worst emulation that I've seen, but it's definitely, it's definitely towards the bottom of the pile. Arcade games, depending on the arcade game, do a little bit better. I played Three Wonders on it, and it was eh. <laughs> uh, Game Boy Advance is somewhat okay. This is somewhat okay. SNES is somewhat okay. You could change out the emulators on here and try some better emulators, and it might help you out. All right, let's try some of these. And here we have Street Fighter Zero on the PSP. And as you can see, 
there is some graphical glitching going on already. Um, it's a little bit slowed down. It's not terrible. And I don't know. Sometimes it tends to run PSP better than other times. <laughs> this is probably the worst glitching I've seen in it. Uh, but it definitely does glitch on a regular basis. Yeah, it's, it's kind of coming apart here, isn't it? Mm, not good. And it's only going to do worse uh, when it has to do uh, some 3D. There we go. Knockout. Let's go on to something else. Alright, here we have Assault Retribution. This doesn't play too bad, really. And this is a PlayStation game. I have not played this game before. I cannot believe I never heard of this one because it's pretty cool and I like the graphics on it. They look lousy here because we're blowing them up, but it really does look like a pretty good game. I do like shooting stuff and this has a lot of shooting stuff. Uh, if you can't notice right now, there is a little bit of frame skipping going on here. It's not bad, but it is definitely not perfect. Come on. There we go. Get them. Get them. This is a fun game to play, though. It's a nice inclusion. There we go. Taking them down. Ooh, goodies. Pick that up. No, I can't get that one. I can't get that one. Ah. Stinking game. A lot of aliens. There we go. Nice power-ups. Yeah, this game's pretty good. And it's not too bad. I will point out that the analog stick is what I'm using right here. Which I'm guessing it's really not an analog stick. It's really just like digital. But, uh, or, you know what I mean? It's like a pseudo-digital. It's, it's not bad. Uh, on a lot of these, they stick. On this one, it doesn't. The split D-pad, which I thought was going to be downright horrendous, is not downright horrendous. It's not amazing, but it is reliable, and you can definitely play games with it. So that's a plus. Let's go on. So you fancy yourself some Mario Kart, do you? Well, you could play it on this. And you know what? It could be worse. This is really not too bad. Do not expect this out of every game on the N64. You're not going to get it. Uh, Super Mario 64 appears to run okay with some frame drop issues. Uh, this also will occasionally start just moving really slowly. Uh, though it hasn't done it during this play session, so it might have just been something where the battery was running low. Uh, which, I should mention, it does that all the time. Uh... I have a hard time getting more than maybe an hour out of this battery on this thing. But look, you know what? N64 emulation's not terrible. Not great either. One more thing I want to point out is that you can get into the settings in the emulators by pressing the screen and just selecting settings here. There's not a whole lot here, but at least you can change like input and the scaling mode. So that's a big plus. All right, a little plus. All right, and here we have Three Wonders, which is a pretty fun game. Actually, it's a selection of three games. And it is one of my desert island games because I figure I'm getting the bonus of three games for one if I was stranded on a desert island with it. Um, it runs questionably. There's some frame skipping going on. Especially when it gets busy on the screen, it's a little bit hard to control. Uh, definitely, definitely not the best emulation I've seen. I, I can't say it's the worst emulation I've seen because I've run a lot of handhelds, but uh, it's, it's definitely not great. And it's a real mixed bag uh, with CPS emulation on this particular machine. All right, here we have Crash Bandicoot Racing on the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance emulation on here is not too bad. 
you know, it's like everything else. It's hit or miss, but I will say that I've definitely played what I would consider to be more powerful systems that have done a worse job on emulating. It really, it really isn't that bad. Hmm. I'll be darned. It did something right. Good job. And here we have some Genesis or Mega Drive, depending on your region. And it's, you know, not bad. It, it really isn't bad, especially if you played a Fire Core. It really seems to be quite good. Better than that. It's like all Android emulation, though, you know? It's good until it's not. So some games are not going to run as well as others, but, you know, this really seems to run pretty decent. Yeah. Ha! Ah, die! You two. Oh, no, no, no! And here we have Sonic Blast Man running on the Super Nintendo. And, you know, the Super Nintendo emulation's definitely not perfect. There's definitely some slowdowns. But there are way, way worse Super Nintendo emulators that are being sold in the same price range. So it, it's not going to be perfect emulation, but it really isn't that bad. And neither is... Mr. Blast Man here. I love punching people in the face. And here is Robocop. As expected, Nintendo emulation is pretty solid on this. Definitely not reaching the level of horrible. I did not test a whole lot of games on here because I found that in Android, emulation is generally, you know, pretty solid for this particular platform. The controls are working just fine. Uh, they're nothing special, but in the case of these cheap handhelds, being nothing special is usually a good thing. Yeah, this isn't too bad. I mean, other than the game. I really dislike this game. And here we have V-Rally on the Game Boy Color. And I would say that Game Boy Color emulation is better than what I've seen on average. It is not... Uh, really skippy like it is very often so uh, it's kind of a plus on this particular system that said on the big screen this anti-aliasing is a little bit obnoxious and I have not found a way to turn that off so it's something you might want to note that said you could probably just use a different emulator if you wanted to uh, it is Android you can customize it hmm not bad all right let's go get to the verdict so, what is the verdict on the Tlex you like here? Well, uh, mostly I'm going to have to give it a thumbs down. And some of the reasons for that are a really light and shoddy construction. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I actually had to take this thing apart and put it back together uh, to get the top right shoulder button working. Or the right shoulder button, it doesn't have to be called the top right. Um, the D-pad did work pretty well. The analog sticks worked better than average. Emulation on the device was okay, but it's kind of a pain in the neck to run games that you've added to it, and it doesn't have a whole lot of internal room. Uh, the main attraction to this thing is, of course, it's an Android handheld, and I was really hoping for something like a GPD XD Lite. This is nothing like an XD Lite. You're going to be downloading your own APKs. It doesn't work well with any of the major... Um, any of the major app providers and the reason for that is real lack of local storage space and they also used a really old version of Android for this so I couldn't adopt the space uh, as main system space that was a real problem so uh, even though it's got you know a good screen and some solid some solid points uh, I just I can't recommend it you know if you really liked it hey there's nothing wrong with that. People should make personal choices, but for me, that's nah, a definite thumbs down. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.